Hey, welcome to Rusty Guns. So today's video we're gonna do uh, is showing you how I do the blue removal and then polishing stuff. Um, and we're not gonna, I'm not gonna go through each and every single part um, because that video would be just way too long. So basically all I'm gonna do today is show you the cylinder. So I'll go through that just using the cylinder, but the process will apply the same to all the other parts. But um, but before I get to that, I want to show you guys real quick because someone mentioned this in the last video and it was a good point because I didn't notice this until after I had already done my video, which, you know, then I'm not going to go back and make the video even longer. But as far as the firing pin on this goes, um, if you can tell, I have to put my glasses on here, my spectacles, and find something I can point with. I'll use this right here. So you can see that this has kind of like a circular form around here. And these are actually just like little nubs or little indentions down in there. And so it has like a specialty tool to actually remove this. And this would come off this little circular. If you guys can see how this, I'm trying to do this without looking. So you can see that line that kind of goes around. But the problem is, is this has been worn down over the years, as you can see from it being opening and closed. And so, right, so I don't know if it's how well this is gonna pick it up, but right there, it comes down and it's actually gotten kind of a little bit in, elongated right there where that seam is. Let's see if I can show that somehow better. It's really hard for the camera to pick it up. It's kind of like right, right in there. It's a little bit elongated from where this seam should come around. It should kind of turn here, but it goes down a little bit farther. And that's from years and years of that going in and out. And you can see how it's kind of beveled down right there. Um, so, I mean, I could take that out, but I've got a feeling that it's gonna, you know, I'm gonna end up having to replace that piece right here. Um, and so best bet is just to leave it in there and you know only replace it when needed um, because you know it's lost metal from that plate and then it's lost metal from it's lost metal from the plate and then it's lost metal from right in here so um, we're just going to leave it as it is um, because you know I don't plan on using this gun a whole lot so it's not going to be that big a deal it's not something that i'm going to be going out and shooting every day or whatever but anyway just wanted to show you that and thanks to the viewer for pointing that out because you know like i said that's what i like about the channel is that you know guys can hey did you notice this or did you see that and you know like i said sometimes i do notice it um but uh you know for me to go back and re-edit a video and then repost it it just takes way too long <laughs> this is way too long but anyway let's get on to today's video and that is the blue removal and polishing of this gun so we'll start with this one right here all right so there's many different ways to remove bluing and rust um, you can use the birchwood casey uh, blue and rust remover um, some people use um, navel jelly so there's various different ways just pick whichever way you're comfortable with or whichever way you want um, but uh, if you're going to use this birchwood casey stuff i'm gonna let you know right now stuff stinks okay so kind of be in a well ventilated room or whatever because otherwise your spouse or somebody is gonna gonna be mad at you for making the house stink um, i also i always wear gloves when i do it um, just because sometimes I have little small nicks and cuts on my fingers and hands, and so I just don't want to get it in it. Don't want it getting in there. Um, you might be, your skin might be sensitive to it, so you know if you have to, just get you some gloves to wear while you do it. All right. So basically, I just use Q-tips when I do this. Um, you can actually put this stuff and soak this stuff if you want. That's up to you. I'll put my spectacles back on just so I can see better as I do this. And I'm going to show you guys this beforehand so you guys can see it, actually. So that's kind of what the cylinder looks like. 
it's already lost a lot of its bluing and stuff. show you while I'm doing this what it is doing so you can see that it's not as doesn't have that as much of that black look anymore because so uh, that bluing is coming off and then typically after you do this you run this under uh, some cold water I'm not going to do that immediately because I still got other parts of this to do but I'm just going to dry it off real quick let you guys see it now that it's got the majority of the bling pulled off. So we'll still got a little spot here or there, but that'll come off as we do the next part of this. But there you can see And a lot of that stuff is stuff that you can't tell what it looks like until actually you actually start remo removing this bling. Because somebody was pointing out that they didn't see a whole lot of pitting or, or rust on the on the parts uh, on one of the videos. And a lot of times, some of the things when it has a really muddled look like this did because of the bluing was missing and then you had bluing in other spots and you get this really muddled look. Uh, even sometimes little small cracks can be hard to distinguish until you actually take the gun apart and you actually start doing this. So right. you can see the majority of that is all gone. You still have a spot here and there and that's okay. It's not worried about that. You can, you can go back over it. This video is just to show you guys how I do it. I'm not, you know, if you have any spots where you're, you want it to be a little better, just go right back over it and hit it again. Um, so I'm gonna show you this piece, because sometimes, like I said, the person was mentioning they didn't see much rust or whatever, but it's all, like, sometimes it's little tiny things that I can see that the camera can't kind of pick up on. And if you see down in along that rail, you can see that there's tiny little pit marks. It's not massive, but you know, it's something I want to remove. Same way with that. So, anyway, set that off to the side. Cause we're, we're, let's do this. All right, so next step. Okay, so my next part of this, um, I just went ahead and rinsed this off in cold water um, and everything. So now we'll begin some of the polishing parts of this. And what I do here, and some people will agree with this, some people won't, but I wet sand the metal. It helps with any small pits that I can't see, and it'll also start to polish this metal up. I'm going to show you that right there. You can see all that brown. So that's a rust pocket right there <coughs> that you're gonna have to make sure you get. And that's something you won't see unless you do this so you guys can see kind of what the wet sanding does. So. And it's just gonna give it a little bit smoother finish starts to brighten it up just like that and then I am going to and then what I do is uh, typically I'll do this until I'll, I'll do the wet sanding until I, I get it to a point that I like it and then I hit it with quadruple lot steel wool and kind of polish it out uh, to get it ready for the bluing part uh, so I'll go ahead and do that we'll come back real quick I'll show you how all that looks all right, so I was just polishing on one part of the cylinder so that you guys would be able to see. And so 
that is kind of the difference. So that's what it looked, would look like beforehand. And then as you get done, well, that light's really terrible sometimes. So back, back and do the wet sanding. When I, after that first round of wet sanding, I stop and I just work that one area wet sanded and then started hitting it with the quadruple out steel wool and you get that nice brighter shiny area and then you just keep going until you get it to the point that you are happy with you know whatever point that you get man that light so terrible sometimes so there you go so you can see on that one how dull that is and then if I bring it around to the one that I just polished you can see how you get a how it's much much shinier and ready for that bluing and that's basically it that's the process that I use and I do that to every single part um, it's a long painstaking process but you know, it's the one that I feel it works for me, um, the one I like to use. Uh, I'm sure there are plenty of people that have lots of, I don't know, power tools or other tools that you can use. Um, I have Dremel tools. I mean, I, I could, you know, hit this with a Dremel and, and do it, you know, but I just like using my hands when I do it. That's just basically it. So, um, but anyway, there you go. That's the process. Thanks a lot for joining me, guys. I will see you for the next uh, Workday Wednesday, which will probably be on actually re the parts. And again, I'll just like blue one part so that I don't make the video too long uh, for anybody that you guys are just like, all right, finally, come on, get on with it. All right, thanks a lot for joining me, guys. Take care. I'll see you next time.